is tree. Before that, we have to know that what is the meaning of sources. Sources is nothing but is something which provides information regarding the past. Already we learned students what is the meaning of history. History is nothing but in the study of our past. For the past, our historians is just going to construct. For that, some information is going to provide. Who is going to provide? Our sources. Without these sources, our historians not able to construct the history. That information is provided by our sources. This sources is divided into two groups. One is literary sources, second one archaeological sources. Literary sources is nothing but it is some writings are available or written records are available. That written records again divided into religious and non-religious or else we call it as a secular. Then what's the meaning of religious? These students, I said already, literary sources means written records are available. That written, written records again divided into two parts. Is it? Yes, religious as well as non-religious or secular. What's the meaning of religious? Means writings which deals with the particular religion. That sources we call it as a religious. For example, the four Vedas, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, these all related to our Hindu religion. The same way, the Bible is related to the Christianity. The Quran is related to Islamic or Muslim religion. The same way, the Jatakas and the Tripitakas is related to Buddhist. Angas and the Kuvas are related to our Jainist. That all the information students, we are calling as a religious sources. Next one, the secular or non-religious sources. It is not going to deal with any particular religion. Then what? It is a common writing. Means some plays or some dramas including some foreign travelers account. The account of foreign travelers also. What is this? The foreign travelers accounts means there is a system from the past one ambassador they can visit to another country they can stay and they can study about that dynasty and they are going to write about that industry or any administration about that king. That books also will come under the non-religious. Already I said the plays, some of the dramas also will come. For example, Kalidasa. Kalidasa has written number of books students. One is the Raghuvamsham, Meghatutta, like that. So that all the books will come under the non-religious also. The foreign accounts, very good example, Indica, that is the book. It is written by Megasthanis. Next, we will move on to the archaeological sources. This archaeological sources again divided into three. So, before going to learn about the parts of our archaeological sources, we have to know what is the meaning of archaeology. So, archaeology or archaeological sources is nothing but the study of the study of the remains of past. Dear students, you have to observe here remains means what is left over. What is left over? Some materials. Some materials. Which are those materials? That materials we are going to learn in archaeological sources. Here, no written records are available. Based on some materials, our historians are going to construct the history. Which are those materials? For example, coins, weapons, 
inscriptions monuments etc okay these are some materials based on these materials our historians are going to construct the history then these all the materials are going to get very easily students no not possible what to do we have to dig the hut because these all the materials the students it went inside the hut because these all the materials the thousand or million years back materials we are discussing about the million years back that all the materials the students it went inside the hut it won't get very easily because of that we have to dig the hut and all and we have to get get that all the materials out the process of digging the hut and taking out the past material we call it as a excavation excavation means the process of the process of digging the hut to find old objects okay the process of digging the hut to find out the old object for that we call it as an excavation after digging the hut and all we are going to get some materials some coins or some weapons or pottery some of the inscriptions like that that materials we call it as a artifacts artifacts so remaining objects remaining objects we call it as a artifacts okay this material when we will dig the hut we are going to get that after that automatically the historians are going to construct the history it not possible there are some special people specialists are there to study about the materials for them we call it as a archaeologist what we are going to call archaeologist
we call it as an inscription as well as epigraphy. Very good example, Anukhabar inscription. It is located in UP. It is drawing a line about Samudra Bhutta's administration. Samudra Bhutta is a very, very famous king in a Gupta dynasty. He given the instruction, one of the court people, Harisena, to build the inscription. Harisena, he constructed the inscription, the name is Alhabar inscription. It is going to tell about Samudra Bhutta's administration. Then how it is going to helpful while constructing the history. First one says, so in the inscription, it is going to tell the king as well as the date of that particular period when they create the inscription, who and when. That very clearly it mentioned in the inscription. Dear student, here that we are the normal people, we are not going to do the inscriptions at all. Very great kings, they are going to create the inscriptions. Then second one, the extent of their empire or the kingdom. How much they extend? It mentioned very clearly in the inscription. Then third one, very any important events in their period, any wars they conducted, when they conducted, against whom they conducted, what is the result of that war, everything they mentioned very clearly in this inscription. Then also it is going to tell about the social life, economic and the political activities that particular period of the king. It is the information it is going to give for us with the help of inscriptions. So next one is the monuments. Monument is nothing but there are the old buildings, okay, which are important historically. That old buildings we call it as a monuments. Example, some of the temples, caves and the stupas. Temples in the sense we know that it is the only place of the Hindus. They will go to the place and they are going to worship that. Here, the caves in the sense, may you can visit the Bombay, the Ellora and Ajanta. They are the very famous caves. It is throwing a line about Buddha as well as the Buddhism. Okay. And last one is the stupa. May you can heard about these two, but you not heard about the stupa. Stupa is nothing but, there is a dome shaped buildings erected as a Buddhist shrine means they are going to keep all the Buddha's material, which are the materials he used inside that, then they construct the buildings in a dome shape. That is the holy place of the Buddhist. That place which we call it as a stupas. Sanchi stupa, you can heard about that. It's very famous. It is located in a UP only. Okay students, how it is useful that monuments while constructing the history. It is going to tell who built that, when they built and why they built. An example I am going to tell you students. Taj Mahal. Who built that? Shah Jahan. When he built in 1631 to in 1652. Between that it built. Okay, why he built? Because of the memory of his wife Mumtaz Begram. So we get the answer for our past questions. So that all the answers we are going to get through this monuments and also we come to know the art as well as the architecture of the building also. In such a way this monument also it is very useful while constructing a history. At last one other objects. Other objects includes the coins, Weapons and pottery. So here first we have to learn about the coins. First one is a coins. The study of old coins we call it as a numismatics. Numismatics. So here the coins are very useful while constructing the history. How? The first one, so while making a coin, they are going to use a metal. Which metal they used? 
either the gold, silver, or some other bronze or some other metal. Based on that metal, we come to know the economic status of the particular period. For example, in Gupta Empire, we found a number of golden coins. Then easily we can consider that Gupta dynasty is very richest dynasty. Like that. Second one, in a coin, very clearly it mentioned the date, which period it belongs to. Then third one, it is going to tell about the trade relation between two countries. Dear students, in earlier days, our Indian Indus Valley civilization, that period we found out some Mesopotamian, now present what we are calling Iran as well as Iraq, that uh, coins we found in our India, even in that Mesopotamian civilization field or area, we found out our Indian coins. So, we can come to know, we have a trade relation between Iran and Iraq as well as India. Then another one, in that coin, sometimes it depicts some of the playing of Veena or the great warrior. That pictures also, it is going to depict. With the help of that, we can consider that particular king or that particular dynasty, how much is encouraging the cultural activities also. Then even we come to know that administration, how much strong it will be. Then sometimes these students, these coins are very useful like that while constructing the history. Dear student, it is our duty to preserve our archaeological sources. Because of that, there is an organization that comes under the Cultural Ministry of Government. There is an organization, the National Hachi Archivers India. It is established in 1920 in Delhi. What is the main intention to establish this organization in the sun? Preserve our old book, magazines, some archaeological objects. Even they establish number of museums throughout our India. It is a small or a big, that is not a matter, but preserving our archaeological sources very much important because we have to know about our past. Even see students, by using a carbon 14, there is a technique. By using this technique, we come to know our archaeological objects, how long it is. Either it is a 500 years back or 50 years back. Okay, we come to know through carbon 14. One of the very famous American scientists, he found out, he found that is carbon 14. Through that, we can see students find out that how long it will be. Through that, I am going to conclude this lesson. In this session, we are going to learn the sources of history, means types, literary sources and archaeological sources, again the divisions also. Then, why it is need to preserve our archaeological sources? Thank you so much.